Or was I? No, yeah. So, in part one of this series, I took you on the first uh, two legs of my cross-country journey on Amtrak from New York City, really starting Newark Penn Station, down to DC, to Chicago overnight, on my way to Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, if you haven't seen part one, I will link it in the description below. I highly encourage you to watch that. But really where we left off was, we were in Chicago, annoyed, hungry, and dirty. Ow! Because of all the delays, we didn't get a chance to shower at the Metropolitan Club in Chicago Union Station, and we were about to board the California Zephyr. Welcome back to the channel. I greatly appreciate you coming back. It Ice machine's gotta mess me up, like, right off the bat, of course. You know, I did this last night. I did this last night, right? And uh, audio didn't record. Picture looked great. I looked great. As, as great as I can. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you coming back. And if it's your first time, hello, I'm Shane. I'm the New Yorker in Vegas. And this is part two of my series covering my August 2021 cross country vacation from New York to Las Vegas on Amtrak. In this part, we're gonna focus on the most famous and most romanticized line Amtrak has in the United States, the California Zephyr. When I was coming to edit this, I was shocked by how little footage I had taken on the Zephyr, or rather of the Zephyr itself. And I think a lot of that comes down to, well, just the feeling that it gave me. The overnight train, as you've seen in part one, was, was, was filthy. And I expected maybe, you know, on the Zephyr, the train of Amtrak, I might have a different experience. And when I got on the train and I found out that it was exactly the same, it was like, Really? I really wasn't about taking a lot of footage of the train because really it would have looked and been absolutely interchangeable with the train the day prior. Of course, a lot of my review is only applicable if you're traveling in coach. The first class passengers who have their sleeper cars and their own rooms, have their own bathrooms, their own showers and beds. I'm sure what they experience is completely different than what I did. They get meals, they have their own dining car that coach class is not allowed to go to. Like, So if you're traveling first class, I don't want to tell you to, sh to switch off, but like, you can. Coach, this is where this review will come in handy. And the California Zephyr isn't without its redeeming qualities, namely the observation car. And if you're traveling coach, you're most likely gonna spend the majority of your time in the observation car. As you can see, they have huge windows, skyline windows. It, 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 it is a beautiful place to just sit back and watch America, places, that you'll never see when you're flying over them and a lot of places when you're driving through them on the main highways. That being said though, the observation car is not without its areas where it needs improvement. They have booth table seating where you can sit down and have a meal. That's where I spent most of my time where I had the camera pointed out the window. They ask you to limit your time there so that more passengers have a chance to enjoy the car, but a lot of us, myself included, didn't do that because it's just, it's it's a much better place to be than the dark, dingy, dirty coach class cars. In addition to the uh, booth seating, they have these seats that face the windows. Very uncomfortable. They're stationary, they don't swivel, they don't have any give to lean back because they're angled in a certain way. They're not just facing the windows, they're like angled so you kind of have a catty corner conversation with somebody. It leaves a lot to be desired with leg room. And the car itself is dirty. It's it's. They don't bother to clean it up. Like if you spill soda or, or anything, or you track something through in your shoes, like it can get really dirty. People have their feet up with shoes on, on other seats. So the upholstery can get really grimy, really, really fast. But the views are incredible. And I didn't even take the ride that's the most beautiful. Part of the Zephyr that everyone really raves about is going to the Colorado Rockies. And I was getting off in Denver and really thank God because I could not imagine a third uh, day on the Zephyr. The real reason was because as stated in part one, the Amtrak doesn't go anywhere near Las Vegas. So if you're passing through the Rockies, you're going through Utah, Salt Lake, and then through Northern Nevada, that's nowhere near Las Vegas. So it really made more sense for us to get off in Denver or spent the night uh, with one of my good friends and then drove the rest of the way to Vegas. That's neither here nor there, and that'll be covered in later vlogs. The observation car, the best place on the train, but there's just not enough 
of it. You have people in the first class in several cars and you have, I think, two cars of coach. That's a lot of people and one observation car. My idea would be to take the meal car, which is next up, which is just for the first class passengers. And when it's meal time for the first class passengers, you close it to coach. Fine, but the rest of the time, open that bitch up. Let that serve as kind of like observation overflow. You will also encounter a wonderful menagerie of individuals from grifters. Is it grifters or drifters? I don't know. Me no English good. To Amish families, the hipsters, to yuppies, the greatest generation, boomers, Gen X, Zennial, millennials, the dreaded Gen Zers. Yeah. It's kind of a beautiful conflux of, of, of America and international travelers, and they're all in this small space together, and they're all striking up conversations with each other. So you're gonna be involved in an interesting conversation, or you're gonna overhear it. Either way, if it's a conversation you don't like, which could happen, you're probably not gonna get away from this person because the likely chance is that person's sitting not too many rows away from you. Now underneath the observation car is the cafe car. It's larger than the average Amtrak cafe. It even has some seating to the side. Like I said, it's underneath the observation car. So if you want to kind of escape the craziness upstairs, there are booths downstairs. Of course, the view isn't quite as good because you don't have the skyline. It's not quite as stocked, at least when I was on it, as it is in these pictures. But they have the basic Amtrak food, Jimmy Dean, breakfast sandwiches, hot dogs, chips, crackers, thankfully beer and wine, the most important things. Now at the time, they were only accepting digital payment. I think that had to do with the pandemic, but they, they did have a box out for cash tips. Funny how that works. I don't know how it is now, so I, I can't tell you in the authority, but be warned, they may not be accepting cash as payments. You're also warned that they run out of things really, 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 really fast. So my advice is when you board the train, the second they open it up, go down there, buy a lot of the things you're gonna want for the rest of your journey, whether you're there overnight to Denver, another day on the Salt Lake City, and so forth into California. Just just, just kind of stock up. Because they, they do restock in Denver, they do restock in Salt Lake. However, there's a lot of people on this train and things go fast. So like I said, the majority of the footage I took in the Zephyr was of the flyover states. So enjoy a little montage of the spectacular views that this effort does provide. I chose this background music because it, it does do, at least in my opinion, a fairly good job of articulating the stresses and the marathon of going two days without a shower Ow. or proper poop Ow. or hand washing in hot, humid, dirty, loud, shaky, low AC overnights on the California Zephyr. So finally though, we made it to Denver, which honestly, after all that, it felt like the gates of heaven. And you know, that kind of makes the music in Denver Union Station absolutely appropriate. And it is a gorgeous station, so check out a little bit of a uh, train station porn, or as I call it, union porn. Welcome to Amtrak's Denver Union Station. Please check with Amtrak personnel if you need assistance or would like to check baggage. Ticket office is available for ticket transactions. Thank you for choosing Amtrak.
Denver Union Station is in the heart of downtown Denver in a very modern and new, you can tell there's a lot of new condos and buildings there, very young and hip kind of area. And as I said, it's a gorgeous station, which is great because you're likely to be there for a while given the, all the delays and Amtrak experiences. They have the Hotel Crawford, which looks quite bougie and fabulous. A number of food options and stores, and the bathrooms there, while not pristine, did feel like being in Ritz-Carlton or a Hotel Crawford, as it were, after having spent the last two days dealing with Amtrak train bathrooms. So before we headed out to get our rental car, we had a quick breakfast bite at Snooze, which is inside Denver Union Station, which is a nifty, cool, kind of 60s retro looking place. And I'm not gonna say the food was excellent, but after the Amtrak food, it hit the spot. And it was just nice to sit down and chill. And the staff was very friendly, very nice. And it's, it's just a nice laid back place. So now it was time to say goodbye to Denver Union Station for now and uh, hop an Uber out towards the Denver International Airport, which is where we rented our car from. Quick little side note, I call it kind of like rental car way. There's a major runway right across the street. So the planes are coming down and like, like landing, not crashing, oh God. The, oh God, and take it off right there. It was just like, ooh, like it shakes the buildings, which it, it, it's kind of cool. But, uh, but the first time you're kind of like, oh shit. What was that? So upon getting to rent the car, we made our way to my friend's house in the greater Denver area. Thank you so much to my friends for letting us stay. They have beautiful home, beautiful people, beautiful dogs. And I just, I mean, I would like to be adopted by them because um, I, I, I love their house. So as we drove through downtown Denver on our way to my friend's house, we come to the foot of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. That will be for the next installment of this cross country vacation series. And let me tell you something right now, the camera cannot do justice to the absolute majesty of the Colorado Rocky Mountains. The drive through there is the most beautiful place I have ever seen or been in my life. I digress back to saying that I didn't have a lot of footage for the Zephyr on the trip to Denver from Chicago. So I decided, let me wrap up this whole Amtrak thing right here and right now with this episode. So I'm gonna include footage of the return trip uh, from Denver to Chicago on the Zephyr. I already have a hard time sleeping, so sleeping on the train was, was not an easy thing. So I was up at dawn and I was trying to get this one shot of this cool road that kind of reminded me of The Walking Dead when that woke everybody else up on the train. Not to worry, I did get the shot for whatever it's worth. But those kind of loud noises that wake you up at all different hours, it happens nonstop on Amtrak overnight trains. Maybe not for the first class passengers in their, in, in, in their little swanky rooms that aren't really that swanky, but definitely for the coach class. And cause you know, coach only paid two, but you know, not as much. So fuck them, right? Ah. Capitalism. But soon we are back after not as many delays, but still delays at Chicago Union Station. So uh, here's some more union porn. I'm not a huge train aficionado, but it was really, really cool to visit this station. You know, I remember it from the Untouchables, the staircase scene, to when in Man of Steel, Superman snaps off his neck in this corner. And uh, it, it's just, the architecture is absolutely stunning, just as it is at DC Station. And, oh, look, there's the lounge where I didn't get to shower. Yeah. So now it was time for us to hustle ourselves to the connecting train that would take us overnight back to DC. <gasps> or was it? Present day Shane now is gonna shut up and let past Shane 
I'll tell you what happened next. Take it away, me. God, you good looking. All right, so between delays, the horrific math amenities, or lack thereof, no shower or stuff, we're like, screw it. We're renting a car and we're driving back home to Chicago by Union Station, by Amtrak. Can't even have them call our names and I'll still be there. Uh oh. So let's follow this portion of the trip, but. This is a good indication of what final review of Amtrak's gonna be. So we hopped in an Uber and made our way over to O'Hare Midway where we went to Dollar Rental and rented a car. And yeah, it was costing us more money and it was gonna take 14 hours plus, you know, with stopping to get back to New York. But honestly, it was like a weight was lifted off our shoulders, uh, knowing that we weren't gonna be miserable and uncomfortable and, and just at the mercy of Amtrak anymore. And that we kind of pave our own way and stop and get dinner. We got some uh, deep dish pizza at Paisano's in Chicago, downtown Chicago which I'll review that another episode spoiler alert I don't like deep dish so they really would have had to won me over but that, 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 that that's for later of course we stopped for soon we we're back in New York and picked up the baby girl is not that what you want? You want to cuddle? That's it. That's my time at Amtrak. And now, I'll follow the notes on my phone to go... Uh-oh. <laughs> Deleted it. <laughs> ah, that would have sucked. Anyway, I have the notes on my phone to go through my summary of Amtrak and whether or not I can recommend it. First off, the bag placement. It's downstairs, it's away from your seat, you cannot keep an eye on it, and it's right by the doors. They, it's there for the take, and they will shift, not just because of the train shifting, because the conductor and or other passengers just move them. Sometimes you'll find them on a completely different rack than you would put them on there. There's literally nothing stopping anyone from stealing your shit. You can try to bring it upstairs with you, but those are really cramped staircases. I did that, and it was a nightmare. The cleanliness, it's just, there is no such thing as cleanliness on Amtrak. So remember how in part one, I packed a ton of wet wipes and paper towels and toilet paper. Paper towels are the least necessary of those because they tend to do have napkins uh, in the cafe cars, but they will run out of those pretty quickly too. Just saying. The wet wipes now, it depends. I, I am a bougie germaphobe bitch. So I wipe everything down. If you don't mind germs, more power to you. You're not gonna feel any kind of type of way about this. But the majority of us are nestled somewhere between people who don't give a crap about germs and people like me. Oh, she did. So you're gonna wanna bring wet wipes or something to wipe down your tray tables and even your seats. And definitely, 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 if you're overnight, bring a roll of toilet paper with you. It may look silly when you're carrying that to the, to the bathrooms, but as seen in the shots in part one, well, I'll insert here, the toilet paper gets wet, it'll fall on the floor, it's just, and it'll run out really quick. You want your own toilet paper in that way and bring it in a Ziploc bag so when you have to set it down, it doesn't get wet and disgusting and dirty in itself. Like legitimately, I have seen porta potties in better condition than all the bathrooms on the Amtrak overnights, and that's accounting for three overnight trains I took on this trip. And that carries into my next point, bring a disposable toothbrush, one for each night you're there, because you don't wanna put any of your toiletries on the sink there, because the train could shift and it flies in the toilet. It could fall on the floor and there's piss all over the floor. And that's not even necessarily because people are gross, it's because the train's moving, and especially a dude standing up, he's gonna be like, Seriously, like there's this piss on the floors and sometimes, sometimes worse. Yeah. If you have an electric toothbrush like 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 I do, I don't want to run the risk of that thing falling on the floor. And that, I mean, that's it, that's the game. No matter how much I sterilize it, I'm never gonna want to put that back in my mouth. Cafe car, acceptable. It's what you expect on a train. First class passengers get full meals. You don't get that. You don't have the option of that in coach. I recommend bring your own snacks, bring sandwiches on board as we did with Jersey Mike's. The prices are, you know, 
fine. They know with the exception of a few uh, stops where you can get off and stretch your legs for a little bit. Until you're in a major city, there's no real opportunity to get off for any length of time and pick up your own food. So they got you by the balls. And so if you want to eat, you got to pay those prices. Bing, bang, bong. Wi-Fi. <laughs> no matter what anyone tells you, these trains don't have working Wi-Fi. If you're trying to work remotely on your journey, for the most part, you're traveling through the backwoods of America where there is no cell service, there are no towers. Your signal, whether you have Verizon or T-Mobile or Boost Mobile. Where you at, dog? You can be anywhere in the country. An Android or an iPhone, like civilized people, don't make a difference. You're for the most part gonna have a signal, maybe if you're lucky, 40% of the time. So hotspot would then be pointless. The air conditioning is extraordinarily lacking. The coolest seat is the window seat and the warmest seat is the aisle seat. Technically there's AC above you in the aisles. It's mostly by the windows. I don't know how it is in wintertime with heating. I imagine it would be just about as janky with the heat in the winter as it was with the AC in the summer. Bring neck pillows and a blanket. You know, th those neck pillows really, really do come in handy for comfor comfort, comfortability. For being comfortable. There's very poor communication from the staff and the conductors. Uh, the delays, granted maybe they didn't know when the delays would be over, but there, there was no consistent communication. So while you're there looking at the clock being like, am I gonna make my connection? You don't have any updates. You can ask and they'll walk right past you and be like, don't be an announcement. Staff can be very, very rude and they can also be friendly. It really just depends on the conductor. Some will crack jokes, some are by the book. They don't take bullshit though. And I admire that. There were some passengers who they threatened to kick off the train if they didn't behave or they didn't wear their masks. And granted, it's different time since pandemic Amtrak but I do appreciate that there's no bullshit but the communication could be a whole lot better if you're in coach instead of them calling a coach class I should call a whip class whip, whip class I stumbled upon that upon that what is I need more wine whiplash class Say that three times fast. Whip class is what they really should call it because when you're in those last two cars, especially the very last car, you are going to experience the whiplash of the train going at high speeds. And I don't know what the maximum speed is, but you and you'll be awoken by that. You know how you wake up like when you're falling and every noise, every everything that wakes you up feels like that much more intense. That's what it feels like. But even when you're awake, like there are times you legitimately think you're going to derail. And thankfully you don't. Let me knock on wood. Stations. Newark Penn, while the architecture was originally beautiful and stunning, I don't recommend leaving from there. It's worth paying the extra New York hike in fees to take off from New York, Pennsylvania station. That's undergone a lot of renovations lately, especially on the 8th Avenue side. So it's a whole lot more pleasing to the eye than it used to be. It still has got a ways to go and it still doesn't feel like the safest place, but Newark Penn, like legitimately, you always have to be looking over your shoulders no matter what time of day it is. And that's not me judging the individuals who legitimately call that station home. Like I feel for them, but it's just a fact of traveling at Newark Penn Station. Now, all the unions, DC Union, Chicago Union, Denver Union, gorgeous. DC Union does suffer from some of the same safety concerns that you'll experience in Newark and in New York. It's not to the same degree and there's a whole lot more as far as amenities go, food options, bathrooms, and like there in Chicago and, and Denver, you could just spend time in there appreciating the architecture and the grandeur of those stations. So what I I recommend it. Yes and no. Flights are fucking ridiculous nowadays. So if you need to get from point A to point B and you really don't want to take a bus because really why would you? Amtrak is a great wonderful option. If you can afford to sleep a car and you want to have the experience of it, that is where the romanticism I think is. If you're traveling coach, there's no romanticism about it. It's 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 a labor to get through. If you're looking to kind of have like a family thing where you sit back and you just look at the views and it's like a bonding experience but you can't afford the private rooms, which tend to run a thousand or more dollars, you're gonna be severely disappointed and the kids are gonna be cranky and you're just, you're gonna regret it. So I cannot recommend it for the romanticism of it, only for the practicality of it, because yeah, it's a whole lot better than a bus. With the exception of the observation car, which I said needs to be more than just one car, the nicest train that I took during this whole time was the Acela from New York to DC. Why is that? Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because business people need to take the Acela Corridor, Boston, New York, DC. They're gonna make it that much nicer. And I think that's a true shame because it's this effort. 
it has a reputation. It should be nicer. It should be at least on par with the seller. All that being said, I'm giving Amtrak the benefit of the doubt. Maybe all my issues, while I doubt it, maybe it was due to COVID and the pandemic. It's possible. In just under three weeks, I'm going to be taking the California Zephyr just one night from Denver to Chicago and I'll reassess. I'll have a little follow-up. Won't be a full video probably, but I'll have a little bit of a follow-up to see how Amtrak is doing now. I'm gonna keep an open mind. I'm gonna give them a second chance because everyone deserves a second chance. Almost everyone, not everyone, but most people, most of them. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, I'm babbling. The sun has gone down. It's beautiful. You're beautiful. You've gotten this far. Thank you for watching. Please consider, if you haven't already, liking this video, subscribing to the channel, sh 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 subscribing to the channel, commenting, hitting the bell icon for notifications, and sharing. And if you do none of those things, thank you for watching. I appreciate you for watching. I love you for watching. And I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves. And I'm going to take care of bottoming out on this glass of wine. Pinkies up.